Hi, this is Tutorial from John A. Pi. Today I'm going to show you how to program a goo ball. Um, it is going to require a tad bit of, co a tad bit of coding. Well, I try to avoid using it because drag and drop is just, well, easier. And uh, it'll require the Pro Edition if you want to have it look real all cool and everything. So, first we're going to need the goo balls or jelly, anything you want. You want it sprite. This is mine right here, and you're gonna want a tad animation of it being like squished, really. And then growing back, so it's gonna look like that. And then it's we're gonna want the ground, of course, because we're gonna want it to have gravity. So, in its create event, well, we could have it solid and. We want it solid, or at least that's what I put. The gravity is pretty simple, 270, and since it's a goo ball or really anything, we're going to want it lower than 1. And I have these codes in here, so sprite index choose. This is just something that I added, so it gives a little bit of color. Uh, depth equals random. This is a range, a range of it. And image alpha equals random, a range. So... If you can, if you, if I'm going too fast for you, then you can just pause the video or really anything, because you know how it goes. In the sub event, we're going to have a whole lot of drag and drop actions. Now, see, this is where the Pro Edition comes in, because you're going to want to transform the sprite to make it look all good. See the option right there? So, we're going to want the angle to be direction. Oh, and I forgot to mention. Make sure that it's the origin is in the center. And if uh, there is no s if there is not a collision under it in Y zero, we want it relative. And then transform the sprite the X scale, not Y scale. You might think it was Y scale, but I got confused on that for a little bit too. But it's because since the angle rotates when it's going downwards the Y scale becomes the X scale, and the X scale becomes the Y scale. So you want y, you want the X scale to be 1.3, so it stretches it a little bit. If there is a jelly below it, well, if there's jelly inside it, then go to a random position at a random speed. That's why we want it solid, because right here. If Y is larger than room height, oh, these are just things that I added, so if it falls off the screen, it can go it can move back onto the screen. If it collides with a jelly, or another goo ball, then same thing. And if it collides with the ground, well, I wanted it to act like a goo ball, so if the vertical speed is larger than two, bounce a little bit. But no matter what, you always want it to move free in a random direction and random speed. And set the vertical speed to zero. So, you want to make sure... Okay. Just wait. Okay, I'll move this into the area. So I'm gonna draw some ground and play some goo balls. So now they look and act like goo balls. And now it's probably going to get a little bit crazy because some of them are flying off the screen and jumping back on. They're getting all fast and everything, so. Now, some people might not want them to collide with them, so that's really simple. Just take off, take this out, and take these codes out. So that's pretty simple. And you might want to play with it a bit more like I did and change it to, like, sprite index equals, and you can have a random. Like I did. Because that makes it really cool. So, I actually got inspired for this video because I was playing World of Goo, and I just finished it. Aw, oh, crap. I guess I moved something. I'll fix that. Yeah, like I was saying, I was playing World of Goo, and I just finished it, and then I was like, hey, I wonder if I can program that, and all that, so. Ah. 
Ah, crap. The only default with that is the defect with that is that if you place two or more, they can get squished. So have fun with your goo balls <laughs> or jelly or really anything. See ya. Bye.